Hello people, Sam, so I'm doing a review of Miss Marvel. It's a brand new Disney Plus show slash Marvel show. And here we go, we have another one. It feels like we're always getting these shows before it was Moon Knight and now it's Miss Marvel. And yeah, with this video we will, be, we will be discussing full spoilers from beginning to end. And I will apologize because I feel like every single time I review a TV show, I'm just reveal, it feels like I'm reviewing the finale and I'm really trying to review the whole thing, but the thoughts of the finale are just so fresh in my head. I know, like I say, I try to take a step back. I would give it about some time. But these Marvel shows have been so uh, formulaic, it's kind of easy to review them the day they're done. So I'm just getting this one out the way, to be honest. Um, but I will say, now that this show is over, this is definitely my second or third favorite of what we got gotten so far when it comes to the shows. I don't know whether I like it. I think I like Loki more still. But I'm, I'm kind of between whether I like this one or Moon Knight a little bit more. But um yeah, because they're kinda similar because like Moon Knight I really was I really loved and then the last episode happened I was just kinda like, eh, it wasn't the worst final episode, but it still had its MCU problems that we have with our MCU final episodes. And this show is no different. I actually loved this show even more than Moon Knight and then the last episode happened and I'm like Huh <laughs> because and I hate saying that because this episode, the final episode to this one, I thought was better than the last episode of Moon Knight, and it might be one of the better finales we've had so far, but it still has the problems that we had. MCU, Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, please listen to me when I say this. It do doesn't have to always be six episodes. You can you can do more than six episodes because clearly what with what this season was building up needed to be more than six episodes, particularly with its characters. With its story, its story isn't as important as the characters when, well, what I felt like prioritized, at least in my viewership, and what I felt like was portrayed by the artist. I felt like it was a, obviously a character first um, show rather than a story first show. I hope that was what they were going for because the story was a little lacking. But, um, yeah, well, there's pros about the story, and I'll get into that. But when it comes to the antagonist is where I thought this show was lacking. And I, was, I wasn't I was expecting the best antagonist in the world. In fact, I was, I'm even fine with the crappy antagonist. But the inconsistency of one in one episode, I felt like it was this person, and the next episode is this person. This show has, like, two or three antagonists. And none of them, like, sold it to me at all. But, um, yeah. But this show, like I said, it follows the six-episode format, and the last episode, obviously, once again, feels rushed. And But let's talk about the episodes up until then, and then I could get into the finale. But when this show first started, I was ready to say this is top five, top three MCU. Because the first two episodes, first three, two episodes of this show, I love. I would say they are a masterpiece of television. I'm not exaggerating. But when as the show went on, it diluted a little bit, but um, the first two episodes were so, so good. I The first episode in particular, just learning about Kamala and learning about her family, and that's what the whole entire first episode is, seeing her love for the, the Avengers. It's obviously, A, a very relatable um, episode. You learn about her, her culture and her family, and they're all, they feel all so real, and that's due to the performances. Every single character in Kamala's life that's in the first episode, every single casting choice was perfect. The acting was perfect, particularly the um, whoever plays Kamala's mother. She did a phenomenal job. She really gave a mother motherly presence. She wasn't overly um, annoying. And um, of course, there's, she has her TV show moments where like moms wouldn't, no one would actually do that. But it was so loving and her performance was so good. I, I was fine to brush those off. And there's a lot of conflict between her and Kamala throughout this whole show. And I liked how those scenes were written. It, did, it wasn't overplaying each stereo. It wasn't overplaying stereotypes of a mother and daughter. It felt like an actual dynamic. It felt real in that, like I said, it's all due to the acting. And also, behind the camera, this show was killer as well, particularly in the first couple of episodes um, when they had the directors of Bad Boys for Life directing. They really brought their all in gate did some amazing camera work, brought some style, and really made it feel like its own work and detached from the MCU. Of course, it felt, it was definitely in the Marvel Universe because there's tons of mentions to it, but beyond that, it really felt like, when it comes to style and direction, it felt so different, new and fresh, and to see the MCU 
in there it, it, and then have a new fresh direction. It was so refreshing for me to see MCU references, but not MCU style that I'm used to. So it was really refreshing to see something like that brought to the table on Disney Plus, of anything, on a Disney Plus show. And like I said, those first couple of episodes when you're just learning about Kamala, her family, her personal life, and see her start to get these powers, learn about these powers. And then even to see her start to dive into the um, past of her family is all really, really interesting. And then we start to introduce antagonists. And that's where my biggest problems with the show come in. Like I said, I'm not fine. I'm fine with the lackluster antagonist, just if it's going to be more focused on um, Kamala and her family. But it juggles antagonists. And that's what the biggest problem with this show. Because... The show built, really builds up this set of antagonists, this one group. And like I said, spoiler review. Now we're really getting into spoilers. But um, it really, it sets its focus on this one group of like eight people that are antagonists. And then they're done in episode five. And then she battles the FBI in the last episode. And so then the last episode, I didn't really feel the stakes, but... At the same time, I wouldn't have felt it that much more in episode six because, like, I thought those other, um, that group of antagonists, um, were a little lackluster to me. But it just, to see these antagonists juggled like this, and I felt like the FBI was just there to be, have something for that last episode, it just kind of felt like, it, it just kind of had me feeling, a little, it, I felt it was lazy with the antagonists at least. But, um, yeah, uh, another problem I had with the finale is the character dynamics felt really, really rushed after that, particularly with the um, mother-daughter dynamic that this show set up. And that's one of the best things that they did, but to see it so rushed in for the finale it was a little disappointing because Kamala's mom has a big change of heart, but then it's one big change of heart, one big change of heart, and I don't really see how all of them really came to her realization of she should let her daughter be a superhero because of course she in at the end of episode five she finds out that she's miss marvel or the night girl or whatever they called her and then in episode six i'm thinking you know the episode ends after that i'm like okay maybe we could have some conflict there that she's probably not gonna any mother would probably not want their daughter to be a crime fighting superhero heck if i was a dad or um I wouldn't want my kid being a superhero on the streets of, um, crap, why don't I know where she lives? Wherever, um, area she lives in. New York, right? New York. I don't know. Do I have to look it up? I'm looking it up. Jersey City. I don't even remember what my point to that was, but, um, yeah, she lives in Jersey City. Um, but, t yeah, to, to have her kid fighting in Jersey City, I remember my point to that was now, like, to a uh, area like that, and, like, of course, um, it, it's a populated area, and so it's, like, things like that where I felt like the development was a little rushed, questions that she should have been asking were dismissed because it has one episode left, because... And I felt like they wanted to do that. I just think the show needed more episodes. I think this could have been a solid 10 episode series. And I know Marvel's so tied to this um, six episode format, but it needs to go beyond that because clearly these shows want to be longer than that. Because particularly this show now. Because um, particularly because and I know story-wise, yeah, six episodes, but make the story a little bit more... Um, have have a little bit more meat to the story so it can be 10 episodes so you can fulfill these character dynamics that you want to do because like i said these particularly with the mother and it just so it really disappointed me in the last episode what they did with them because it's just because she is so prim proper the mother so like i have to be this way because that's what the culture says that's what everyone says that's what everyone thinks and so the fact that she immediately just accepts that her daughter's a superhero and says, okay, yeah, you can do it. You can fight crime. Felt a little rushed. And the because then, of course, the FBI, the, literally the FBI is arresting their son. And because they sent him to babysit and to watch because they think it's cute. And the FBI is practically shooting at them. It just felt so, like I said, it felt rushed and out of character. But, um... That's just finale problems. 
And when it comes to the finale, it was still an enjoyable episode with the characters that I loved watching. And let's talk about those, that final scene. And with the X-Men, obviously. Well, not with the X-Men, but they play the X-Men theme. And it's implying that she's one of the first mutants that we see in the MCU. And my thoughts on that is... I don't think that was planned until they, after they shot the show. And then they shot it. And then they they literally tacked it on at the end. Because the there's, the camera goes up. And then it pans to her sitting on the lamppost that we see um, in the poster. And then you think it's done. And it says one week later and then it shows bruno driving a car and he's like yeah i think you're a mutant end credits and then he's like did it and and i'm fine with her being a mutant i'm not attached to the comics or anything like that so i i know x-men fans are mad but personally i don't, i really don't care but um yeah so but but it was so tacked on it was like the most obviously tacked on thing i've ever seen in my life to the point where i'm like how much control does Marvel have with their projects at this point? Because I'm fine with them giving their directors creative control, but if you're gonna do a big change like that by making her a mutant and not telling your creative team that's making this show that until last second, that's what I'm just assuming what happened. It could have been the plan the whole time, but to me it felt tacked on because it's like, Bruno's like, I was wrong. And I was like, but you did so much research earlier into it. Like I said, it felt tacked on. I'd be very shocked if it was the plan from the beginning of writing the show. I don't think it was, but if it was, okay. <laughs> but there's also an after credit where um, it feels like Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel switch places. It was cool to see Brie Larson. I liked her um, costume design. And I'm curious how that's gonna set up the Marvels. I mean, I'm very excited to see Kamala in the Marvels and I hope that um, she gets some time to shine. I hope Brie Larson really proves herself as Captain Marvel proves the world wrong. Because I know, obviously, her first movie wasn't perfect, and she's not really the problem. It was the writing and the direction with that film. So I hope this next um, Miss Marvel, um, I, the Marvels, really fix that. And I also really hope the show gets a season two, because particularly with a couple characters, I felt very unfulfilled, unfulfilled with her um, dynamic with the other character, Bruno. I really felt like his storyline with her was very, of course, incomplete and not really addressed in the last episode. So I hope... We get a season two unless i don't think that's something they can really address in the marvels because she's not the lead of that movie brie larson is so we'll see but overall i had a really fun time with this show all from episodes episodes one two three four i loved episode five i kind of forgot about i didn't care about the lore to be honest like i cared about kamala discovering her lore but i wasn't attached to the episode where we, she's I would have preferred an episode more centric on her learning about it than us learning about it, if that makes sense. I would have liked learning it with Kamala rather than learning about it ourselves, because I get that she's fascinated, but I, her, her dynamic and her character is so what made this show watchable, and so to see episode 5 kind of like pay attention somewhere else, and then of course the latter half of that episode focuses on, focuses on Kamala again, which is fine, and that's obviously the part of the episode I really liked. Then episode six and episode I still like, like once again, ran into those Marvel issues. And so I don't know, each time obviously a Marvel show has that happen to them, it gets more irritating. But it doesn't make the quality worse of the show because it wasn't a bad episode. Overall, it could actually be a great episode. But what makes it so irritating, it's, it's falling into this formula where I don't, know how much i'm gonna really care about this show in a month because that's what's happened to a lot of these shows hawkeye i i thought it was a great show when it ended but i i'm gonna be honest with you i forgot about that show i don't remember much of it moon knight i remember a lot of episode five because i thought that was a phenomenal episode and i do but i the only episode of moon knight that i really kind of dismiss is the finale but i do remember moon knight pretty well and loki i remember very well but other shows like falcon and the soldier where that had the worst case of finale syndrome actually i think Falcon and winter soldiers had the worst finale so far and it really puts a wet blanket on that whole show like finale is how you end it it's the last episode it has a lot of hype and so this episode this i think this one survived enough in its finale to make me think fondly of the show and moon knight did okay enough to make remember make me remember how great the other episodes were but marvel really needs to fix this format because it's not working it, they, the creative team did a good enough job with this show. Also, 
I know this is very off off topic. The kitchen fight in episode three was incredible. It's one of my favorite fights of all I've actually seen in Disney Plus shows. Like the kitchen fight was had me had my jaw dropped to the floor. I was like, yes, this is so much fun. But yeah, I'm gonna give Miss Marvel an eight point four out of ten. I know that um I said it's about tied with Moon Knight. I know I gave Moon Knight an 8.7, but like I said, I'm now starting to realize that these once these shows end, they can be a little forgettable. And so I do take off points of, off of Moon Knight for that, but um, I'm not going to let that affect me anymore. So trust me when I say these Marvel shows, the scores will probably be a lot more definite because I feel like once WandaVision was done, I gave it like a 9 out of 10, so already down to like a 7.5 or 7.58. So just these shows have don't age well once they're done and maybe the an 8.4 will go down after this um after this review is done i don't think it will because i kind of prepared for the fact that this might not age well with me and heck maybe i might need to raise my score after this because maybe the show will age well and i'll think fondly upon it um the biggest telling is next week will i miss it that's what the biggest telling is but um because we we'll see I think I will miss it partially, but at the same time when the finale ends and frustrates me like this one did, and what what's so frustrating about these finales is that they're not bad. They're not bad, they're just the same. So I hope Marvel can learn and do something different. Heck, I know She-Hulk is gonna be um, nine episodes, but at the same time, I'm not very excited for that show. So I don't know, I, I don't know what, what actually what's after She-Hulk. Comment down below if you guys know what's after She-Hulk, because I actually don't know. So, yeah. Anyways, that's my review for Ms. Marvel, so like, share, subscribe, and stuff like that, and adios.